What about uh, the take a stand mentality, like Chick-fil-A not being open on Sundays? What can we learn from that? I mean, I, I personally think that the other, I would exploit that the other way. And I would say we care about you. We are open on Sunday. Um, I, don't, I don't think like, I don't know. There, there's, different, there's different thought processes to that. But, and Chick-fil-A is very successful in what they do. So you can't argue with their success. But just my general approach or feeling about things is I would be talking about how I am open when they're closed. So you know that Burger King actually, I mean, I don't feel like you really pay a lot of attention to the fast food industry necessarily because you're not necessarily going to Burger King for lunch every day. But Burger King has an interesting campaign. They say, come to Burger King where on Sunday you can get a chicken sandwich, which I think is yeah. absolutely brilliant. That's exactly what you're saying. But the lesson there is is that you know, no matter what, the, what your environment is, you can create an advantage based on perspective. Like they're taking a stay in Chick-fil-A saying we're not going to be open on Sundays or, or maybe if you've got, you know, you're in a town with a bunch of dealerships that are closed on Saturdays and you're the one that are open on Saturdays, maybe you make a big deal out of that, right? Or vice versa. If you're really stuck to it, you say, you know, take the Chick-fil-A angle and be like, no, we're closed on the weekends. That's, we care about our people and blah, 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 blah. So you could go both directions on that. I'm way more apt to say we're the ones open on Saturdays. Saturdays. You yeah, mean Sundays. No, I mean Saturdays. Oh, I so I feel like uh, I wouldn't do it like Burger King's doing it because I wouldn't want to offend people that are going to church because I think the idea is they're Christians and they're going to church. Clearly, I think that's Chick Fil A stance. I I wouldn't go right at them. I would do it in a way I was like, hey, the best place to eat after church. I would do it a little bit different because I, I I'm not. I understand that that's important and that they want to go to church. But I also uh, have my whole life gone to big meals after church on Sunday. Yeah, it's so funny that in the, a restaurant. Yep. So the meal after church is an event. That's what just I would like go church. After. Yep. I remember that too. I always went to my grandparents. Without house. offending anybody, just but maybe that's just because I was raised that way. I don't know. No, that, that that's relatable. That makes a lot of sense. You can go at it and and not necessarily punch Chick Fil A right in the face. You can you can compliment them. Yeah, just see that there's a window there and try to exploit the window without offending the... Because the people that that's going at aren't going to... Uh, they're not going to go to Burger King because they think that, that, that Burger King's attacking their religious views. Yep. I, wouldn't, I don't yeah, want to make could, it about the religious views. That could backfire on them really easily. That's great. Good stuff. All right. Last but not least, have I told any jokes today? Two. Mm, um, well, this what about is, Amazon Prime? Yeah, it was pretty good, wasn't it? It was good. Yeah, it's interesting, though. Like, internationally, thinking about the international climate, I'm really worried about what's going this on. Is, in, this, uh, is a this is clearly a joke. Maybe. Um, what really, I was hoping you were going to do as a tribute to Norm was do the moth joke word for word, like memorize it and deliver it exactly like he would. So I've spent. Do you know how many views we would get. On I've spent YouTube a lot of time that? watching the moth joke, and I've I would say I've probably got about seventy five percent of it committed to memory. Um, How does it start? So uh, this moth, he walks into a podiatrist's office. And it starts with the driver. Oh, that's right. Jeez, thirty five percent memorized. But um, but do if you've never seen the Norm Moth joke, it's on. He was on Conan. Yes, it was a Conan O'Brien thing, which Conan played perfectly. Oh, also. Well, and Norm used to be a writer for Conan. Yeah, they the way that they worked off of each other was perfect, much like the way you and I work off of each other for Great. the jokes. But uh, no Norm. But talking about China, so some crazy stuff going on in China these days, right? Did you hear they're uh, they're drafting babies into the army? They're calling it the infantry. <laughs> I love it. That's good. So the, uh, so the last um, outside the automotive industry model that I want you to talk about is Staples uh, having a back end with you doing UPS services in their stores. So the shipping? Yep. Yeah. 
And so like in our in our industry, uh, that maybe applies like doing detail, like and dent repair and uh, airbrushing bumpers and things like that, right? Yeah, a lot of that sublet type stuff that we typically don't collect a nice margin on. Yeah, and so, and I think we get that question a lot. Like, do you sublet it or do you do it in-house? If you're big enough to do it in-house, you're gonna capture the, the fleet work, the internal work, right? And then you have the ability to sell the retail. And it's funny that if you're detailing cars and doing a good job, literally replacing a customer's transmission does not make them smile. But when their car is detailed and they pick it up, like they, you know, the comment they'll say is, oh, it feels new again or, you know, yep. that sort of thing. But it makes them feel special and makes them feel like they're treating their car to something, you know, like their, right. their second largest investment in their life that they're doing something to protect or enhance that. Yep. I think a detail puts them back into the ether of the purchase because it looks like what it did the day yeah. they bought it. There's there's definitely a psychological thing going on with that too. The other thing, if you have in-house sublet, um, glass or window repair, uh, the airbrush bumpers, everything like that, not only could you keep your, your own shop busy, literally you could sublet, you could be the sublet vendor for other places that don't have that stuff too. So you could have a, you could have a retail wholesale thing going on with that as well. Yeah, it'd be a really good way to kind of diversify the business. Thanks so much for watching this clip of Service Driving Revolution. We're uploading new stuff every day, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss out. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the show, call 8333-ASK-SDR and we'll answer your question on the show. That's 8333-ASK-SDR. For special deals on our books and training, head over to offers.chriscollinsinc.com. Now that's offers.chriscollinsinc.com. I'm Chris Collins, and I'll see you in the next video.